for my buddy Kyle Shanahan, yeah, there's a part of me that's like, is he cursed? I mean, is he cursed? I mean, a ball falls out of the sky and touches the foot of a player. Like, unlucky there. Dre Greenlaw is warming up the run on the football field. Tears his Achilles tendon, right? I mean, some crazy stuff happened. Like, I, you know, I feel for my friend to the, to the utmost. But, you know, I know we're going to dive into all that let, stuff. Let, let, let run this by you. Because yeah, right. I want to have a full segment to talk about right. the Damn, we've, kicker receiver already been 30 minutes decision into the show. on overtime. Right. Let me ask you this. Since right. you brought up Kyle and whether or not he's cursed. Yeah. Before the game, I was talking to a very well-known national reporter. Okay. And I don't even think he would care if I said his name. But I hadn't thought of this. Right. He said to me, if the 49ers lose this one, yeah. does Kyle need a fresh start somewhere else? Mm. And I hadn't thought about that. I said, well, he's got Purdy. I mean, let's see what happens with Purdy. But, you know, at some point, I could see him saying – it's just not, I mean, it's just not going to work here. I mean, we got two Super Bowl losses. We've got so many years where we're close, but no cigar. Maybe I just need to be somewhere else. And you got to wonder what Jed York, and you got to think of it from Jed York's perspective. He's the guy that ran off Jim Harbaugh. At what point does he start feeling like we need to do something different? I think it would be stupid for the 49ers to want to make a change. I think you just need, because you're still in it every year. And one of these years, it's going to break your way. Right. But what gets harder is every time you come back now, it's almost like the Bengals. I remember every year the Bengals got to the playoffs and it was, can Marvin Lewis ever win a playoff right. game? And with each passing year, that became the thing. Yeah. So let's fast forward to the next time the 49ers are in the Super Bowl. That narrative is going to overwhelm. Sure. Because now we got another one dropped right. on top of 51 and 54. Somebody's got to be change that narrative. You know who that narrative, who had that narrative for a long time? Andy Reid. Yeah. Can't win Great, the big game. Point. NFC championships, lose the Super Bowl, can't get over the hump. What got him over the hump? Patrick Mahomes. He got his he got his <laughs> magic man, right? You know? You know, Mike Shanahan had a John Elway. Again, it's not like it's not like Shanahan and the 49ers are losing to some slouches here. I mean, they're losing to the guy we're talking about is the greatest quarterback maybe in the history of football. 28 to 3. Shanahan was not the head coach. I'd like to remind everybody again. It was Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. It wasn't like, you know, they're losing to some team that came out of nowhere. They're losing to greatness, you know, in really close football games. So, you know, that's how I look at it. But hey, I think the big thing is, and you know, what's so unique about it is Shanahan's done it without a big time quarterback. He saw his dad do it with John Elway, and he's being beat by these big time quarterbacks in these big moments. You know, and yesterday, Brock Purdy did a lot of good things. There's no doubt about that. He didn't play bad, but I don't sit here and go, ooh, wow, he played great. They had how many times did they have the ball? Had up a lot a of score, time. Had a lot of Go time. up two scores. Yeah. You know, make a play. Do something to put your team over the edge. That's where, again, where I think if the roles were reversed a little, a guy like Mahomes or Brady, and they were on the 49 or somebody like that, they would have punched another one in there at some point to go, hey, we're up two scores. We got control of this thing now. There was never that play from Purdy. And there were some good plays. Again, don't get me wrong, that I think jump started the 49ers. He got in a rhythm at the end. I know he made the play where he scrambled a little and he threw it to use check. But again, we make a big deal about that where like Mahomes does stuff like that, like two out of every three plays. We're not used to seeing that from Purdy. So we're like, oh, wow, look, he did that too so once today. And yeah, you know, again, missed some maybe some opportunities to make some wow throws to put the game away, right? You know, uh, and, and I think that's maybe the difference here in games like this, you know, and you play that quarterback there, uh, you, your quarterback needs to make a few wow plays and some wow moments. And we had what miss Debo out of the back of the end zone, barely Chris Jones gets pressure. Ayuk was open one time earlier in yep. the game, uh, late in the game. Of course, it's Chris Jones in Brock Purdy's face on the third down and overtime that forced the 49ers to kick the field goal. And again, I think those are moments where. Brady's, Mahomes, whatever of the world, they make a play in a lot of those moments to kind of go, no, no, we're we're winning the Super Bowl. You're not. And again, it's hard. It's a great defensive call, again, by Steve Spagnolo. But in these got to have it moments, this is what the Chiefs do. They have it. They have it. They have the magic, and they always answer the bell. Brock Purdy finished his second year in the NFL. The question is, where's his ceiling? Yeah. And how right. close is he to his ceiling? How much better can he get? Right. Kyle will know better than anyone else. Right. Look, it's a tough decision. 
I don't even think it's that tough. I don't know. But you got Kirk Cousins out there. Is what happened last night enough to get Kyle? Because we saw what they did a couple of years ago. Yeah. When they decided we're going to trade up all the way to number three. Right. We're going to fix this quarterback right. position. And right. that didn't work. And right. then we get Brock Purdy and he falls out of the sky with the last pick in the draft. Yeah. And I feel like they have so much invested in him that they're not going to bail on him. And I'm not suggesting they should. I'm just saying if you want to get to that next step, you have a guy that can help you contend for the next 10 or 15 years. And maybe he does grow into a guy that can win multiple Super right, Bowls. Right. But if you just want to win one and get this monkey off your back, it's almost like with Steve Young. Like, I just need to win one. I need to win one. I need to win one. Do you think about I, I'm Again, this is just for purposes of discussion. Yeah, I, I don't think he should. Yeah. But you got to wonder whether he's at least in a quiet moment over the next couple of weeks going to be thinking, hey, when we get to Indy, maybe we want to talk to Agent Mike McCartney about what it takes to get Kirk to come to San Francisco. I, I mean, Shanahan, Lynch, they're aggressive. They're aggressive thinkers. You know, would I put that out of the realm of that growing through their brain? Certainly not. Acting on but, it and thinking about it are two different things. No, I know. At least, they at least got to think about I, it. That's, uh, thinking about it, sure. And, I, and again, like th those two guys, knowing them, th they think of everything. They really do. But I think the, the point you made is what I like. You know, I think they're far down a road here where, again, I think the team believes in Brock Purdy. The team's not leaving yesterday going, we didn't win because we have Brock Purdy, right? I don't think that's – this is different than the Jimmy Garoppolo years, right? Right, where it felt like in those games it was like, oh, manage Jimmy, manage Jimmy, and every now and then I'll call a play to make Jimmy look good. You know, they ran their offense yesterday. They're playing a great defense. We know that. Purdy did make some plays like we talked about, and I do think there's room for him to get better. Now, again, he's never going to be Mahomes. He's not going to be Josh Allen. That's just not who he is. But, again, right pieces around him. You know, Shanahan continues to develop plays and more of a system around him. And let's be serious, too. Brock Purdy did good things. It wasn't great. Like we said, there was a few throws where he completed passes, and I went, oh, if he threw that on the money, like McCaffrey's going to run another 20 yards, right? And they had to go down to catch it. But here's the other disappointing, and, like, they're getting a little bit of a free pass here. You know, Brock Purdy, yeah, maybe not all-star level play there, but damn, Debo, Siddle, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brian, Brandon Ayuk, I mean, they were disappointing yesterday. The, the Chiefs basically played man-to-man -man and said, screw you, we are in your face, can you get open? And they could not get open throughout the day. That, to me, was one of the big things and why they hung around. We talked about the 49ers' weapons all week, right? We had people come in, most people picked the Chiefs, but they waxed poetically about the 49ers' weapons, and there we were in the game, Nick Bolden, Legereus Sneed, McDuffie, right? They were all over those guys all game long, and they really – Never got it going as far as that trio is concerned. You talked about it. It was, it was the McCaffrey show. He was the only guy that really looked like he showed up in a big way for this uh, 49ers offense. Debo Samuel was targeted 11 times and had three catches. He could not get open. Now, we talked about this all week, right? This was not a Debo game. Remember, you kept hearing me say that. He's going to have – Debo cannot get open against man-to-man, -man, really good man-to-man -man corners. And – it was Strugglesville all day. And he, he was hurt, space. too, in the second half. He, he had the hamstring, and he up. kept going. But right. 11 targets and three catches is disappointing. Three targets, two catches for George Kittle for two yards. Now, he did catch that key fourth down in the fourth quarter the that route. kept the drive right. alive that resulted in a go-ahead touchdown. But Kittle was largely MIA. Debo, largely MIA. Brandon Ayuk targeted six times, three catches for 49 yards. You're right. It was McCaffrey with 160 total yards, eight targets, eight receptions for McCaffrey. Now right. he's not running down the field, so no. it's a yeah. higher percentage right. pass, but he had 22 rushes for 80 yards, 3.6 yards per carry, 80 yards receiving. He had a touchdown. He did have the fumble on the opening drive. There was a point where we were talking about MVP possibilities. McCaffrey was it, right? McCaffrey, and then like Juwan Jennings at yeah, some point was, was a name. It's like, hey, 15 keeps he can doing get stuff. Open against man -to -man. Threw a touchdown pass. Right. Caught a touchdown pass. Right. First guy since Nick Foles, only the second guy to do that. And right. both throw one and catch one. So Special there were, day. there were, until Mahomes took over. Right. You were it going, it's like, going to be a non quarterback. It's going to, yeah. I mean, at one point I'm thinking, holy crap. If Harrison Butker kicks a 50-plus yarder to win the game, he's got <laughs> it may, five. It may be Harrison right, Butker. It may right. be a Mark Mosley. Even though it was full season MVP, it could be a kicker 
as the Super Bowl MVP because it's almost like none of the above. Yeah. There was a long stretch of the game where we were like, I don't know. Yeah. There isn't an MVP. Right. Right. I, you know, you're right. It was, I was, my son was sitting there like going through his phone because he wanted to vote and he saw it all on the big screen. Right. And he was, he was like, why are they asking us to vote now? Right. It was like 12 minutes in the yeah, fourth yeah. quarter. He's like, what? You know, he's seen enough games between the 49ers or Mahomes or whatever to go wait. This one's coming down to the end. Let's wait to see what happens there. But we were having that same conversation kind of like, man, right now it's not the QBs. Hey, Mahomes wasn't in takeover mode at that moment. Uh, but, but yeah, that was incredible. And you know, the Juwan Jennings, again, I think speaks to, we always have a guy in the Super Bowl kind of comes out of nowhere. It was his day. He was a guy that could get open to man to man. The you know again, we're gonna people are gonna sit here and get on Shanahan. I'm gonna go. Shanahan managed the game perfectly, right? Some of his stars let him down. The call that play, the Jennings throwback touchdown pass, and that moment. I mean, again, come on, everybody, that's coaching. I mean, it's coaching to call that play right there is incredible. It really is. Now they got away with a holding on George Carlaftis that should have been called, and maybe a guy downfield. Right? No, no, because but I don't it think was he was. Behind the line it was scrimmage. behind the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage. And I didn't think he was, he was egregiously field. behind anyways. Yeah. Uh, but the holding, I think maybe they got away with. But that was a great call and a big moment. And, uh, hey, good to give a little Juwan Jennings love right there. Yeah, it, it really was something. And you see guys make contributions that you really didn't expect. And somebody needed to step up when the the stars weren't getting it done. And, and you know, back to Purdy, that play that we focused on, at the two minute warning. I mean, that's really where the game was on the line. That was it. If you make that play, you know, we talk about championship throw, right? I talk about championship throw. This wasn't throw it to the end zone for a touchdown to win the game. This is convert here. And we work the clock, as we said, back at the beginning of the segment and you can win the game. And they, they made their, they made their call. They were aggressive and it was a lot for Purdy to process quickly. I'd love to know. I'd love to be able to flip this around, run the same defense, and see what Mahomes would have done in that spot oh. when that blitz is coming. Well, What's Mahomes, he do there? Mahomes has two things I feel like he would have done. It's a great question because I thought about the same thing. He's either going to throw this sidearm, and the guy's not going to be able to bat it. He's going to throw it right underneath his left armpit, right? He's going to raise his arm, and he's going to go right underneath his left armpit. Or he's going to fake it, and the guy's going to jump up, and he's going to run right, right by him and go get the first down. Yeah. And that's where it's like, does the freaking guy, I almost wanted to say the word, does he have a f- cheat code? No, okay. No, no. Sorry. Wait a minute. Wait Sorry, a minute. London. You Sorry, just Birmingham. put the brakes on. It deserved on, the word. And then you It deserves the, the word. <laughs> the guy deserves the word every now and then. He has a cheat code. It's like, it doesn't matter what you do. He would have found a way to do that, but it's, no, I mean, you know, it's that, that's Neo my point. when he figured out the matrix. <laughs> right. It really is. Right. When he's able Catching to catch bullets. the bullets right. and then <laughs> throw them back at you, yeah. you know, it's a, it's crazy. Right. It is. So it really is. you're right. And you know what? Here's the bottom line. You don't do that to Mahomes. They probably you wouldn't don't have. send a right. free release guy right. at him, one guy, because he's going to do that. He's, he's going to throw it that. around. You're going to throw through your legs. He's going to come up with something. Or he's, he's going to do the pump and he's going to run right. right by you. Or he's gotten to the point where he knows how to get it all protected before the play happens. Yeah, he'll see it. He'll, he'll see, see it. it. I mean, he's gotten to that. How many times yesterday did you see him at the line of scrimmage? Like, they were moving around. The 49ers came out with a good game plan on defense. They did play more aggressive than we've seen them play in the playoffs. I think that flustered the Chiefs. They got some things that on that side of the ball I don't think they were expecting maybe as consistent as they got it. Uh, but, you know, they hung in there, as we know, and, you know, they continue to make all the big plays. And that's the key for Mahomes, and that's why I keep saying he's going to get better. I go all the way back to training camp when he talked so much about wanting to be like Brady from the perspective of yeah. – making all the adjustments, knowing exactly what's coming. There's nothing you can do to fool me. I see you, Trent McDuffie. I right. see you getting ready to blitz whoever's in the corner there in the slot getting ready to come. I know this. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it before the play or I'll deal with it during play. That's the thing. He, he knows how to deal with it instinctively during the play. He's going to get to the point where he doesn't even need to do that, where he can set it up before the play, where he knows exactly where the hot read's going to be, how to slide the protection, how to account for it, change the play, whatever. That's where that brain becomes a supercomputer for a guy who has played and played and played, and he's going to keep getting better and better and better. As I said after the AFC Championship, get used to it. If you don't like it, find something else to do on Sundays between September and January because Mahomes is going to be around, and he's going to keep coming, 
and he's going to keep winning. They're going to keep changing oh. the pieces around him, but he's going to be the guy that keeps it going. I said to my, I got in the car after the game, and I we have so much more to unpack of the game. I know, and we're going to get there. But when I I went, I looked at my family and you know my wife and whatever, and I went, man, I went, Brady. Brady shed a, bed of, a little bead of sweat yesterday. He was like, man, this, this guy's coming. Okay, he did. Peyton Manning, Rodgers, right? Uh, who else? Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. They were all sitting at home going, man. What do we got to do? Are you kidding me? What do we got to do? You know, Peyton seeing the guy, you know, another guy. I'm, oh, okay, gosh, he got three Super Bowls. I only got two, right? But, yeah, I mean, Burrow and Allen got to be going, oh, my gosh, he's got three and we can't get one yet and you know it feels like again that maybe they they didn't even play their best football this year and they still win the super bowl and and to me that's really scary hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk